everyone myself muskan thakur i am an mc student in this video we will discuss about the introduction construction and working of bipolar junction transistor that is bjt the bipolar junction transistor or the bjt also commonly known as a transistor was invented in december 1947 by the team of john bardeen walter brittain and william shockley at the bell labs usa before the transistors vacuum triodes which are voltage control devices were being used the work which transistors perform today all these works were performed earlier by vacuum triodes but there were many advantages of transistors over the vacuum triodes like the size of the transistors are very small as compared to the vacuum triodes the also weight is very less and transistors are more resistive to shocks and vibrations so because of all these advantages of transistors over the vacuum triodes transistors came into existence bjt b stands for bipolar bipolar is the name because there is involvement of both the charge carriers both electrons and holes in the transistor and j stands for junction two junctions are formed in the transistor that is junction j1 and junction j2 Junction J1 is also known as emitter base junction or input circuit junction and the junction J2 is also known as collector base junction or output circuit junction the most important thing in bjt is t that is transistor the name transistor is coined from the word transferred resistor in which we have trans and resistor and these two words make the word transistor in transistor the low resistance is transferred to high resistance Here you can see a bipolar junction transistor made of the three regions emitter region base region and collector region there are two junctions junction j1 junction j2 and also three terminals this is emitter terminal this is base terminal and this is collector terminal these transistors are majorly used for amplification and switching purpose basically a transistor holds the ability to act either as a conductor or an insulator whenever an external supply voltage is provided to it and due to this ability it exhibits either amplification or switching characteristic it is known to be a current control device because the current that flows from one terminal to other is controlled by the biasing applied to it we will discuss this much better later in this video while constructing bjt we need to know the width as well as doping level because by the knowledge of width and doping level we can differentiate between emitter region base region and collector region properly in bjt collector has the maximum width then emitter has the medium width and base has lesser width with respect to emitter and collector the reason behind this is given as collector it is going to collect all the majority charge carriers so it requires more area whereas emitter is going to emit all the electrons away from it so it does not require maximum width hence emitter is having medium width now base actually base does not require more area so its area is lesser than the other two regions it only controls the number of charges moving from emitter to collector now we will see the doping levels of emitter collector and base region we can see that emitter has to provide charges for the current so it should have maximum amount of doping because it is giving charge carriers for the conduction hence it has maximum amount of doping whereas the collector is collecting the charge carriers so it is mediumly doped and in base the doping level is low in comparison to emitter and collector Now we will discuss the classification of bipolar junction transistor that is BJT. BJT can be classified as first NPN transistor, second PNP transistor. Now have a look on construction of NPN transistor. This is diagram of NPN transistor and here it is a symbol of NPN transistor. NPN transistor is formed when P type semiconductor is sandwiched between two N type semiconductors. here emitter and collector are n type semiconductors and base is p type semiconductor in npn transistor electrons are the majority charge carriers and the emitter supply electrons to the collector region this is the symbol of npn transistor and this arrow uh, is from base to emitter now have a look on pnp transistor this is the construction diagram of pnp transistor and this is its symbol 
can be transistor is formed when one n type semiconductor is sandwiched between two p type semiconductors in pnp transistors holes are the majority charge carriers and in the symbol of pnp transistor the direction of arrow is from emitter to base this is a cross sectional view of npn transistor this is emitter region and this is emitter terminal this is the base region this is base terminal and this is collector region and this is collector terminal these are the metal contacts these all the regions are connected to its terminals through these metal contacts here this is the cross sectional view of pnp transistor if we compare it with the npn transistor in the npn transistor there were two n type semiconductors which are now replaced by the two p type semiconductors and in npn transistor there was one p type semiconductor that is the base and now it is replaced by n type semiconductor till now we have discussed about the introduction and construction part of pgt now we have to keep a fact in mind that the transistor can be used as an amplifier or as a switch if it is used as an amplifier its emitter junction must be kept in forward bias and collector base junction must be connected in reversed bias so that we can operate it in active mode when junction j1 is forward biased it will offer a very low resistance and when junction j2 is reversed biased it will offer a very high resistance we have the same current flowing in both the circuits initially it will flow through a low resistance that is small r after this in output it will flow through a high resistance capital r so somehow we have transferred the low resistance to the high resistance we are measuring the input voltage vi across the resistance small r and the output voltage v not across the resistance capital r here resistance small r is less than the resistance capital r and by the ohms law vi is equal to i into small r and v not is equal to i into capital r hence vi is less than v not we have applied a weak signal in the input circuit and obtained a amplified signal in the output circuit this process is known as the amplification of the signal now coming to the working of transistor here you can see the diagram of npn transistor in this for the input circuit to be in a forward biased condition we have kept the emitter to the um, emitter is connected to the negative side of the battery and base is connected to positive side of the battery and for the output circuit to be reversed bias its collector is connected to positive side of the battery and base is connected to negative side of the battery let's say the forward biasing potential is vbe and the reverse biasing potential is vcb now we will analyze the movement of holes and the electrons in the transistor let's say vp is a bigger potential for junction j1 and j2 when the transistor is open circuited and there is no biasing potential in the transistor so vp is a bigger potential for junction j1 and vb is a bigger potential for junction j2 now we need to analyze that what will happen if we apply a biasing potential in the transistor now junction j1 is forward biased after the application of vbe barrier potential will reduce let us say that now the barrier potential will be vbb minus vbe and on the other hand if we apply a reverse biasing potential here then vb will increase to vb plus vcb now we can easily analyze the movement of electrons and the holes because we have idea about the barrier potentials because of the reduced barrier potential at junction j1 the electrons from the emitter region will cross the junction and will move to the base region and recombine with the holes but we know that base is very small and lightly doped there is very small recombination of electrons from the emitter and most of the electrons from the emitter will go to the collector region now let us say n number of electrons enter the base region from the emitter and from here alpha n electrons goes to the collector region and 1 minus alpha n electrons recombine with the holes in the base region only 2 to 5% of electrons recombine in the base region and 95 to 98% of electrons are collected in the collector region this is what happens when we bias the junction j1 and j2 in the transistor there is one more thing that is reverse saturation current when junction j2 is reversed bias so there must be a reverse saturation current through the junction j2 we have minority charge carriers in the n side also and minority charge carriers in the p side also 
In the N side, minority charge carriers are holes. And in the P side, minority charge carriers are electrons. So these holes will move in this direction and this electron will move in this direction. So there is a reverse saturation current that is ICO when junction J2 is reversed by us. Here uh, the term is given as ICO because it is a collector current so subscript C is used and here O stands for open circuit because we measure this current when emitter terminal is open circuited. Here the total current IC equals to ICO plus alpha IE because N is the number of electrons entering the base region and alpha N is the number of electrons moving to the collector region. So the current will be alpha times IE. So total current IC will be equal to ICO plus alpha IE. Now for the relation between emitter current, base current and collector current. For this we need to know the direction of the three currents. You can see the electrons are moving in this direction. So the emitter current IE will be in this direction. And when electrons enter the base region, it recombines with the holes. And the collector current will be in this direction because electrons are moving in this direction to the positive terminal of the battery. And to find out the collector current, we again have to look on the uh, direction of the electrons. Direction of electrons are like this, so current will flow in this direction. So for the relation between IB, IC and IE, we need to use the Kirchhoff's law. According to the Kirchhoff, sum of currents entering is equal to the sum of currents leaving. And we already know that uh, the emitter current was leaving and collector and base, base currents were entering. So IE will be equal to IB plus IC. In this video, we have discussed about the introduction, construction and working of BJT. I hope this video was helpful to you to understand the basic concepts of BJT. Thanks for watching.